Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the road to launch. Call of Duty Black Ops 6 multiplayer is what we're going to be talking about today, but I would assume that over the next given days, weeks, we are going to have much, much more in regards to both multiplayer, Warzone, prestige systems, things along those lines. Oh my god. Trust me, this was not the video that I was planning on for today, but here we go indeed. As you can see over here, they go over many things, including maps, spawns, performance, weapons, movement, a few more things, and then looking at launch. We're going to go over all of this today, starting off with the maps. As far as the maps go, um, they essentially go over eight more maps coming at launch. Maps were kind of the most controversial thing that we saw within the beta. A lot of people really didn't like them. They didn't like that there was no larger maps. So let's have a look at what all of the other eight maps coming at launch are actually going to be so first of all we have the vault this one is essentially a large lush desert estate with a vault inside opulent atrium as well as a trophy room sculptures monuments murals everywhere it's an interesting one and i don't know fully how this will work until we kind of see the inside of this one and how it will actually play this is classified as a medium map i just wanted to put that out there after this we have protocol this was the one where you could kind of do the test trial area within the beta so you actually may have I've gotten your hands on this one. Then we have Low Town. This one, you traverse a dockside neighborhood with a boathouse, fishing shed, cobbler, and art gallery. Check the stalls in the market or climb the lattice work uh, for a view of the pizzeria. Swim in the canal and it, or if desperate, the sewer. So in other words, there's a lot of areas to go through for here. I believe that this one is a medium sized map as well. Then we have red card. This is one that I'm kind of looking forward to. This one does look, I would even say large, but they did classify this as a medium sized map. But if you look at the mini map there, this one looks by far like one of the biggest maps as a whole. Um, but as you can see here, this is a soccer stadium. It's the main entrance of a soccer stadium, which is pretty cool. Then we have Verkuta and I want to read this one. So a storm is about to hit the Verkuta mining facility that was once a Soviet labor camp. Both teams visit a place of Mason's history. That's the first mention we have had of Mason so far to battle over key tactical positions rusting and half buried machinery and a variety of exterior and interior transitions. So first time we've heard of Mason since, but this one is also classified as a medium map. I just wanted to say that. Then we have subsonic. This one looks interesting. This one is classified as a small map. It looks very very tiny as you're seeing here then we have payback i believe that this one is actually the safe house um it says deep in the bulgarian mountains the rogue black ops safe house is under attack so yes this is going to be the safe house that we see within the campaign then we have warhead they have changed the name of this one. Um, as this one used to be called Sand House. And as you can see, this is a section of Area 99. We have a couple of Nuketown houses here and then some off in the distance. It is a very, very tiny map. We don't know if this is going to be replacing Nuketown or if we are going to be getting another version of Nuketown in the future. But as you can see, it's a 2v2 and 6v6 strike map. And I believe that is the last map that we have for today. As you can see here, it says, note, all images are in a work in progress. They also say this, we are also evaluating some changes to cover placement across multiple maps, including some of our beta maps, which will be able to show more details closer to launch. So I'm wondering if that is the satellite dish from Scud, for example. Then we go into spawns. So essentially what they are saying here is as more and more players get their hands on the game, the spawn system is going to be updated over and over again. And the more people that play, the more data they get, and the easier it is for them to adjust the spawns. That's why the spawns were better in weekend two than weekend one. And they even say that even through launch and beyond, they will consistently become better and better because they are able to test them more and more, which makes sense. This is one that I am heavily interested in, the performance. I'm going to read this one. Our beta was immensely helpful at identifying and resolving some performance related issues. Over the course of the beta, we identified several areas that were impacting the game's performance. Some areas where, where we've made progress on performance include resolving general script errors, addressing issues related to our in-game user interface, as well as overall improvements and fixes to our asset streaming. So hopefully that one is the hitching and packet burst that we saw throughout the beta.
A smooth game performance is paramount to the player experience, and we've been able to chase down sources of in-game hitching and deploy major fixes since the close of the beta. We'll be continuing to work with experts across all disciplines to improve this. So that's a huge, huge one, and I am glad to see that they have identified that hitching problem and will be fixing it. Next one here, we have weapons. So starting off with headshot damage. So basically they have said that uh, in the beta headshots really didn't matter. And the way that they are making the change, and I actually kind of agree with this, is that they are making it so that certain weapons are going to have better headshot damage multipliers and therefore will affect them more, which to me makes a lot of sense. Maybe harder hitting weapons will be those weapons that actually make more of a difference. Uh, but again, this is something that they will gonna continue to monitor and we'll probably hear more about this. Uh, bullet penetration has been addressed. In other words, there will be less wall bangs um, however, some areas like the pesky snipers behind the radar dish on Scud, you will be able to penetrate those ones a little bit easier. However, ones I think Gala might be the biggest abuser of this is you were doing too much damage through certain surfaces. So they've adjusted that across the board. Other things that they are working on are improvements to fluidity of snipers aim down sights, improved fluidity when swapping weapons during sprint and tactical sprint. Uh, they're excited about that one, so I, we'll have to wait to see how that one works. Uh, I also, I just want to throw this out there. I like that they throw things like this into the patch notes, that they're excited about this one. In other words, they think it makes the game feel a lot better. Uh, reduction of weapon motion during crouch transitions and a small lift to shotguns and targeted adjustments across all weapons to keep SMGs from overperforming relative to other classes. So in other words, a buff to shotguns and maybe a little bit of a nerf to SMGs. Weapon balance is an ongoing process and something that we are working on towards every point in our live seasons. All right, movement, this is a big one. I don't think I need to read through all of this, but to just give you an idea, they're working on continued improvements to animations, fluidity, and fidelity throughout. Um, so this is something that I said from the very beginning is this is the worst that the Omni movement will ever be. It's only going to get better from here. So another thing is adjustments to slide for improved predictability and fluidity. Uh, during weekend two of the beta, we increased the time before you could enter a supine during a slide. After further assessment based on your feedback, we've reduced that time to find a nice middle ground. And they reduced the minimum time to slide after sprinting to prevent accidentally crunching intended to slide, uh, also known as a dead slide. So it just should feel a little bit better. And then slight reduction to maximum slide duration. So it's going to feel a little bit different. Uh, and then intelligent movement updates as well. Nothing crazy there. A few more. First of all, the winner circle. They shortened the overall duration of the winner circle. That is good. I like the winner circle, but it lasted a little bit too long. The, uh, to reduce emote spam, players in the winner circle will now only be able to activate one emote. I'm kind of torn on this one. The spamminess of them was kind of funny, but at the same time, I get why. Uh, improvements to fidelity and lighting of it and simplified the emote menu, which is good. Kill counter. This is one of the biggest ones. By popular demand, we've added a kill counter on your HUD that will track your progress uh, towards kills in one life medals, including those uh, who are chasing the coveted nuclear medal and nuclear score streak. That is awesome. And it's only going to count your actual kills. So I think that's brilliant. Uh, camera motions. We've reduced the overall camera motion on sprint, tax sprint and slide. That is hugely way more important than you think it is. Uh, kill order, they've the increased uh, kills as HVT uh, team score to three, reduced HVT survival score to 25, increased score limit to 150. Uh, the HVT will no longer drop their pistol when they are eliminated and improve notifications when players are selected as the HVT. That one's important for me because I never knew that I was the HVT. Sleeper Agent removed the time added when earning eliminations while Sleeper Agent is active. That's a downside in my opinion. Sleeper Agent was a lot of fun and you could keep it going for longer and longer the more kills that you got, but I guess they thought that was overpowered. Equipment. Stimshot has been um, changed from inventory based to cooldown based by default. Oh my God. Wait, 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 am I reading this right? Stim shots have been changed from inventory based to cooldown based by default. This makes stims even more powerful. 
If I'm reading this right, this means that there will always be a cooldown on stim shots, which means that you can just use them over and over and over again. By default, you don't need a perk for it, which means stims are an absolute crutch in this game. They already were the way that they were before, and now that they are even better, that is insane. Uh, quartermaster strategist will decrease the cooldown time. Um, so in other words, that will buff stim shots even more. Uh, then they resolved an issue where the combat axe would not deal lethal damage at the round start. Uh, it wouldn't be a Black Ops game if you can't hit those cross maps at match start, which is awesome. Looking at perks, uh, after assessing perk data from our time in the beta, we made a few updates to ensure compelling decisions are made. So Assassin, uh, the Enforcer, and a Bruiser, the Enforcer, are moved to perk uh, from perk 1 to perk 2. Uh, Dexterity Enforcer and Gung Ho Enforcer are moved from perk 2 to perk 1, so really nothing big. And they improved the RCXD controls, thank god, because those things sucked. Uh, looking at launch, the studio and our partners are hard at work making sure that the launch of Black Ops 6 reflects these changes and many more. We'll be sharing more information in the coming weeks. Look out for more Call of Duty intel on the Call of Duty blog. So they don't say when they will be coming, but they know that they will be coming soon. Also, look out for more details in upcoming patch notes sometime during launch week. So we'll be getting more about that moving forward. But that's essentially it for now. So those are all of the changes that have happened since the Black Ops 6 beta. Some of them are huge, and I can't believe I am saying this, but they made stims even better. That is mind-blowing to me. So I want to hear what you guys think. Are these good changes? Are they bad changes? Are they in-between changes? Um, let me know what you're thinking about launch of Black Ops 6, but the stim shot one to me is insanity, and uh, those are absolutely going to be crutch on everyone's classes, but... We will see moving forward. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. And until next time, peace. We are, we are reaching for the stars, but we're making this too hard. And I want